Hello everybody, um, we put together this short video for you on how to fill in the medal application um, and where to get it and how to download it, what information to put in from the questions that we've had to hopefully make it easier for people and we want as many people to fill it in as possible. So watch this video, play it back and if you've got any questions please, please contact us. Hello everybody, um, welcome to a video on how to fill in and find the Nuclear Test Veterans application form for the medal. We've been asked to put this together because people are struggling to, to find and download the medal. So the first place you want to go to is an internet browser. I'm using Google Chrome and go to www.labrats.international forward slash metal. This will take you to our dedicated metal web page where you will be able to see the eligibility criteria. It will give you an introduction and which tests are valid for the eligibility, the operational areas, the qualifying service, the eligible personnel, how the eligibility is going to be validated how foreign nationals should apply and we have details of the operational areas and dates for the medal, which tests from 52 to 63 are included and which tests under Operation Dominic in 1962 are included. We have a ministerial statement on the application process and then we've included some frequently asked questions for people who uh, have asked us these questions over and over um, we've included it here so that you can find the answers without having to call us. To apply for the, the medal all you need to do is click the apply now button and that will take you to a gov.uk Ministry of Defence medal form. Now there is no specific nuclear test veteran form it is the generic Ministry of Defence medal form. So if you click this link here, you can see that it's displayed on screen. Now a couple of things, you can just print it from here, download it and fill it in in pen. Or you can do as I'm going to do, I'm going to type it directly into the document before printing it. So I'll go to page three where the information is going to start. The first box is the MOD Metal Office reference number. You don't need to fill this in. They will be filling that in for you. So the first box we fill in is I wish to apply for. And in here we are going to put nuclear test veteran serve this metal. Okay. Part one has to be filled in. It's details of the veteran, who the eligible person is. So if the veteran is alive or dead, you need to fill in part one. So in my case, unfortunately, my father died in 1994. So I will fill in his details here. Um, so this will be Mr. In the title, in the surname, I will put in Owen. In any other names held during service, so if they've had a name change, obviously fill that in. His place of birth, which was Cheltenham, and his date of birth, which was 1st of the 8th, 1941. Now, the service number is desperately important for serving personnel. Obviously, the medal is open to civilians as well, and all the scientists. If you don't have a service number, then obviously leave this blank. But if you do have the service number, it's essential for serving personnel that the service number is filled in. As you know, all of the MOD records go on service number. So if you have the service number, it's a lot easier for them to look it up and look up the service record. So in my case, my father was Royal Navy. So I would tick this box. But we've had lots of questions around, well, I'm a civilian um, or I was in the Royal um, Fleet Auxiliary. What do I fill in? So here you can fill it in. Uh, 
and then if it's overseas, so if it was New Zealand Navy, for instance, you could fill in here New Zealand. Give them the information. We've also been told that if you are a civilian and you have a national insurance number, then you can fill it in here. Because this will give them the information that they need. As my father was a serving person, all I need to do is fill in that, because he was Royal Navy. So, where he was on, on enlistment, and I know that he came into Jutland, for instance, um, where he was just, he was, uh, came from Portsmouth. I don't really know all the full details, um, so I'm just filling in as much as I know, and his rank. So the dates of his service, when did he go in? And if you don't know the dates of service, approximate. So I know that he came out um, in 1968, but I don't know the date, so I can just put 1968. This service number tells the MOD everything they need to know about the person. They have all the records of their service. In the details of overseas service, just fill in the details of where they were for the nuclear testing. You don't need to fill in all of your overseas service, like my father was in Malta, uh, Singapore, other places, but just put in where he was. So as fill in as much information as you can in here about the veteran and use this section for the civilians and the overseas, the foreign nationals as well. If you are applying on behalf of a living veteran and you hold power of attorney because they are not capable of filling the form in, you need to fill in section two. So for instance, if my father was still alive, I would fill it in like this, fill in my name and the power of attorney. I would not need to fill in part two. I could then just move straight on to part three if I have power of attorney and the veteran is still living. If unfortunately the veteran has died, you need to fill in part 2A. Now, part 2A looks quite complicated, but it's actually quite easy to fill in. First question really, is a surviving spouse still alive? If they are, tick the box because they are next of kin. If they are not alive, you then have options. Are they the eldest child, a parent, grandchild? brother of the whole blood, sister of the whole blood, nephew of half blood, niece of half blood, or other. Now we've had a question about children and dysfunctional families where they don't speak to the eldest child, um, they wouldn't want to fill it in anyway. Tick the box, fill in who you are. Yeah. Fill in details, so like I've put here, eldest child, not interested. Explain it to them in this other section. It's very important that you fill in the date of death and when the person, the veteran died, because you must enclose a copy of the death certificate unless they died in service. Now, I know some of you won't have a death certificate, so you need to get on and apply for a death certificate as soon as possible. You can get them off the um, website and get them off the internet. You can order them now and they will appear within sort of seven days. And uh, you can expedite that and get it even quicker if you want to with the death certificate in a couple of days. Um, there is a cost to it and you will have to you know, bear that cost. Fill in your details again. Um, if you are... The, on their behalf. So part 2a is if there is a deceased veteran and you are filling it in on their behalf whether that be the surviving spouse or a child or a grandchild or a nephew whoever the first person from the following list who is still alive. Part 3 is the consent 
and it's much better if you can tick this box and ask them to correspond to you via email. That works a lot, lot better because it's a lot faster and it means that they're not having to print letters, put it in a post, send it to you. They can just correspond immediately with email for the application process to say that it's been successful or not. So part four um, just gives you some information about how the MOD collects your information. You can click these links to go off to the MOD's privacy notice. And part five is now the declaration. So ignore this signature block to start with, because when you print this form, that message that says, please sign here in black pen after printing will disappear. And I will show you how that works in a moment. So fill in the address. Now, if, for instance, the surviving spouse is in a nursing home and you are doing it on their behalf as the child, fill in your address here. Fill in the details. Fill in your name. So you see you filling in the details of the thing here. This name must match this signature name. So if the spouse is filling, you're filling it on behalf of the spouse, but you want the information sent to you, that's fine. But the name must match the signature. So if you are filling it on behalf of the spouse, put in here the, the spouse's name. But if you're filling it in, obviously put in your name, like so. And the date, 2nd of April. Uh, and then fill in a telephone number. And the email address that they will correspond with you. Oops. Okay, so then when we've printed this form out, we will send it to the Ministry of Defence Medal Office at Innsworth House, Imjin Barracks, Innsworth, Gloucester, and it's GL31HW. If you want to, I would recommend that you would send this by a signed registered tract delivery. And there is a cost to that. It costs just over six pounds to send it, but then you will know and have peace of mind that they've actually received it. And quite important here is that you have copies, not originals, of death certificates, power of attorney, other, other relevant information. Only send copies. They will not send an original back to you and you will lose it. We've also had a question here about RAF aircrew about the form says, please send your flying logbooks. That is not needed for this application. So don't send the logbooks, all copies of the flying logbooks. You don't need them for this application. And that's been confirmed by the MOD. So what I would do is I would then print this form. Uh, as you can see on the screen, the form is sent to me here as a preview. And you can see this signature block is now blank. So what I would do is then print that and that would come out. I'd sign it and put it in the post. It's not too difficult a form to fill in, but you must have the details with you. Service number, desperately important. Um, if you don't have a service number for the serving personnel, then um, contact us and we can try and find the service number for you. Use this section here, the service regiment courts, if it's a civilian or overseas to fill in Royal Fleet Auxiliary, AWRE scientists, national insurance numbers, those sorts of things. Only include the overseas service where it relates to the nuclear testing. And then make sure that you sign and that this name is the same as that signature block, which is very, very important. Thank you very much. So if you're unsure, go to www.labrats.international forward slash medal. If you cannot print the form, or have access to it online, then please contact us via email or via the telephone or via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we will send you one in the post via second class free of charge. We've already sent out about 30 or 40 of these forms. And remember, when you're sending this back off to the MOD medals office, do not send original documents, only send copies. If you're unable to make a copy, then you can use libraries and other image processing stores such as Tesco's um, that will copy originals for you. You can even take a picture of, your, of it on your phone, go to Tesco's and they will download it for you and print it off for you. 
If possible, you can send the form by registered and signed for. It does give you a tracking number, it does give you peace of mind, but it does cost. It's around six pounds to send it registered or signed for, um, but it will make sure that it's actually got there. But you also need to remember that we're here to help. Even if you don't have full details of service, you don't know your grandfather's service number, for instance, and you're the one applying, give us a call. We have people and volunteers who are looking up service numbers for us, who are checking records, and we want as many people as possible to fill it in. The more people that fill it in now, the better, because if we do have an event in London at the end of the summer, you will have had to have applied for the medal and for it to be approved. So if you are a veteran and you're looking to try and get to this event, if possible, please make sure you apply as soon as you can. Thank you very much. So if you're unsure, go to www.labrats.international forward slash medal. If you cannot print the form, or have access to it online, then please contact us via email or via the telephone or via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we will send you one in the post via second class free of charge. We've already sent out about 30 or 40 of these forms. And remember, when you're sending this back off to the MOD Medals Office, do not send original documents, only send copies. If you're unable to make a copy, then you can use libraries and other image processing stores such as Tesco's um, that will copy originals for you. You can even take a picture of, your, of it on your phone, go to Tesco's and they will download it for you and print it off for you. If possible, you can send the form by registered and signed for. It does give you a tracking number, it does give you peace of mind, but it does cost. It's around six pounds to send it registered or signed for, um, but it will make sure that it's actually got there. You also need to remember that we're here to help. Even if you don't have full details of service, you don't know your grandfather's service number, for instance, and you're the one applying, give us a call. We have people and volunteers who are looking up service numbers for us, who are checking records, and we want as many people as possible to fill it in. The more people that fill it in now, the better, because if we do have an event in London at the end of the summer you will have had to have applied for the medal and for it to be approved so if you are a veteran and you're looking to try and get to this event if possible please make sure you apply as soon as you can thank you very much